I have chosen the way. I have chosen the way. I have chosen the right way. The way to Calvary. I have chosen the way. I have chosen the way. I have chosen the right way. The way to Calvary. I have chosen the way. I have chosen the way. I have chosen the right way. The way to Calvary. The way to Calvary. This is the time of the way. The way to follow Jesus and do penance with him. I have chosen the right way. We have chosen the way. We have chosen the way. We have chosen the right way. The way to Calvary. Let us hear. Come on, let us follow Jesus. So as to die with him and to rise with him again. Satan leave me alone. Satan leave me alone. The devil leave me alone. Leave me to serve Jesus. Satan leave me alone. Satan leave me alone. The devil leave me alone. Lead me to serve Jesus. Oh. Satan, leave me alone. Hey. Satan, leave me alone. Satan, come up for real from me. So that I will serve my Jesus. The whole world leave me alone. The whole world leave me alone. The whole world leave me alone. Let me serve Jesus. Yes, oh. Business, leave me alone. Market, leave me alone. Farm, leave me alone. Leave me to serve Jesus. Money, leave me alone. Possession, leave me alone. Everything, leave me alone. Leave me to serve Jesus. Oh, I want to follow him and die with him. All these distractions of the world. Leave me alone. I want to die with my Savior who died for me. Satan, leave me alone. Hey, Satan, leave me alone. The devil leave me alone, leave me to serve Jesus. Satan leave me alone, Satan leave me alone. The devil leave me alone, leave me to serve Jesus. I have chosen the way, I have chosen the way. I have chosen the right way, the way to Calvary. I have chosen the way, oh, I have chosen the way. I have chosen the right way, the way to Calvary. My dear friends, good day to all of you, my friends, my fellow Christians all over the world. Today being the 14th day of the month of February, in this year of our Lord, 2024, the Catholic Church celebrates Ash Wednesday. And of course, including some denominations who have come to join us on this spiritual journey to celebrate the great feast of our salvation, the great feast of our redemption, Easter. The resurrection day that Jesus rose from the dead and saved us from sin. This is the spiritual journey that all of us are invited 
to reflect, to think about our lives. In the wear of mourning, in the wear of prayers, fasting, abstinence, giving alms, and doing charity. Indeed, loving God even more in a deeper way than any other way you can think about. Remember, the 14th of every February, every year, is celebrated as Valentine's Day. We celebrate the feast of that great priest who gave his life for married couples, in fact, wedded even those in prison, but unfortunately, he was killed. And today the church remembers that great love he shared with fellow human beings. But today, as soon as they, we speak more, more than the Valentine's Day, we are called to show that true love by loving God and loving our neighbors, including our enemies, in a deeper way of forgiveness and mercy. So it's more than the Valentine celebrations that some will reduce it to sexual immorality. And of course, we are called today to leave that alone and embrace our Savior who has invited us to follow him to the desert to begin the Lenten penance of our preparation to celebrate the great feast of our redemption. And so Ash Wednesday is the beginning of Lenten season. And this period has been marked for 40 days. In fact, if you include all the Sundays of Lent, you are talking of 46 days of penance. But because Sunday is the day of the resurrection, is excluded from fasting and penance, we count 40 days of preparation before Easter. And so 40 days are given to us. The Lord has marked another 40 days for us to go into ourselves, re-examine ourselves, re-evaluate ourselves, check our lives whether we're in good state of life with Him. If not, we are asked to reconcile with Him and our neighbors. It is a necessary step towards us, our own grace and salvation. Why not you find out who are you to be called out of this life today? The way you are living your life, the way I am today, the way you are today. Are you sure you can see God with this type of life you are living? Today is a great opportunity, another opportune time. And so the readings that are being presented on every Ashwinaise day are always stagnant. The same readings, year in, year out. In the first reading, we are to meditate in the prophet Joel, chapter 2, from verse 12 to 18. And then Psalm 51, composed by David, when he himself was accused, and uh, when he himself made a serious mistake to indulge himself in adultery and killing the husband of the beloved that he later married. David composed a song crying that he has sinned and God should forgive him. This is our son. This is my son. Have mercy on me, O God, for I have sinned against you. The cry of David should be our own cry. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 20, then 1, then chapter 6, verse 2, St. Paul calls us for a favorable time. There can be no other favorable time than the period of Lent for repentance. It is a time of penance. It is a time for reconciliation. It is a time for making a new turn. This is the appropriate time. This is the right time. This is the favorable time. It is here for you and me. If we cannot use this opportunity for another year, another great chance God has given to us in this year to do land right from our hearts, to tear our heart instead of our garments, then forget it. And then we will read the great gospel of Matthew chapter 6, from verse 1 to 6, then 16 to 18. Here Jesus gave us the three pillars of Lent, what will guide us all throughout these days of Lent. The life of prayer, the life of fasting, the life of almsgiving. These are the things that will cement our penance. These are the guiding principles that will make us to do Lent from our hearts. 
And so, my dear friends, today is the day of Ash. By the way, when you are asked, why are you signed with ashes in your forehead? What will you explain to those who do not know and they, they may like to know from you as a Christian, as a child of God, and above all as a Catholic? The signing of ashes originated from the scripture. Is it in the Bible? Yes, of course, it is in the Bible. The two main reasons for the ash that are being given to us, distributed and shared and signed on our forehead, one is to let us know that we are dust. And upon dust we shall return. We are ashes. We were made from the dust of the earth. In Genesis chapter 3, when God cursed man and drove him away from the garden of paradise, in verse 19, chapter 3, verse 19, God says, Go away from me, you dust, and upon dust you shall return. Meaning that we are bound to die. So the signing of ashes reminds us of our mortality, reminds us of our death. I am just a mere a dust, you are dust. So we have little time in this life. Even if you are to live up to 200 years, 300 years, 400 years, people have lived this life many years ago and yet they are no more. You and I must surely die. So the ashes reminds us of our last day, the day of our the moment we shall leave this world through death. And so the second reason for the signing of ashes is to let us know that since we know that we shall die, we should make amends of our ways. We should make a new turn. We are sinners who are bound to repentance. We are sinners called to repent. We are sinners called to conversion. A call for repentance is here. And so these are the two real meanings of the signing of ashes on our forehead. The signing of ashes does not mean that we are holy. Some people are coming to be signed with ashes to go as a show, to show people that they are righteous or they are holy. Some will say, oh, see my ashes, I've gone. The Roman Father has signed me with ashes. The minister has signed me with ashes. So I'm holy. No, it is the opposite of what you think. The ashes reminds you that you are a sinner. A sinner that is bound to repent. That is exactly why you are signed with ashes. You are not coming to be signed with ashes so that you will not die again. Some will say that is not my portion. No, the ashes remind you that you must surely die. And so you should prepare because we have little time, little or no time to spend here or to waste in this world of mortality. All creatures must surely die and return to the dust in which we were made. This is the reason why we are signed with ashes. Even in the Old Testament, we see how ashes were being used as a sign of repentance. You can see when the prophet Jonah in Jonah chapter 3 was sent to the people of Nineveh, whom God was already wiped out from the face of the earth, like Sodom and Gomorrah and other cities. God told Jonah they should do penance on cyclone and ashes. And for the 40 days time God gave to them, they used it judicially, including the kings and the children. They were signed with ashes. And at the end of 40 days, there was a great forgiveness. So, King David, when he was told by the prophet Nathan, his spiritual director of his sins, he cried and was on the ground, ruling with ashes. He did not, he was no longer wearing his regalia as a king. Even Queen Esther, in Esther chapter 4, with Mordecai, one of his officials, they fasted with sackcloth and with ashes. Many, many people in the Old Testament fasted with, with sackcloth and ashes. It's the day of atonement, the day of sacrifice, which the Israelites will call the Yom Kippur, a very great feast. The great feast of expiration, purification. So today we begin the great feast of purification to purify our souls, to purify our spirit, to purify our hearts, not just to, to tear our garment as the prophet Joel we call all of us, not just to tear our garments, to be in the morning mood, to carry long faces, to be angry and all that, but it is the heart that God sees. We should tear our hearts from the old, 
the little children, the nursing mothers, and everybody, the expectant mothers, all are invited to join the priest on the altar and cry for our sins. We have to cry for our sins. As individuals, we have sinned. As a family, we have sinned. As a community, we have sinned. As a church, we have sinned. As a country, like our country, Nigeria, we have sinned. The entire world has sinned against God and our neighbor. Terrible things are happening in this world, in this our world even more than before. And this is the right time for us to do more penance than even the, the people of old. We too should be signed with ashes. We too should cry from our hearts. We tell God that we have sinned. He should forgive us. This is what Ash Wednesday is reminding all of us. And know throughout the days of Lent, it will be a cry, a cry for repentance, a cry for, for prayers, a cry for penance, a cry for mortification. This is the day that God has asked us to do this three pillars that Jesus mentioned to us in the gospel of today. This is say we must pray. He said, when you pray, then say if. It's not a conditional statement. We must pray. We must fast. We must give alms. We must pray. This is the time Christians will be leaving their, their places to attend church, to attend morning prayers, to attend morning mass, to attend holy mass at all times. This is one of the greatest prayers that Jesus has given to us. Attend mass. You can trip to a, a distant place to attend mass. You can go for morning prayers in a place even where the Reverend Father is not there or the minister to attend morning prayers. You, you are invited to call your families. To gather your families in prayer, children and their fathers and their mothers to stay together and say their rosary in their household. We must always go to receive Holy Communion in the church. It is a time for prayers and good thing the church has given us opportunity to go for the stations of the cross. Here we are asked to go for the stations of the cross as a community, as a church, on Wednesdays evenings and Fridays evenings. We are to pray. Pray at all times. When Jesus says you shut your door and pray so that nobody will see you, it does not mean that you should not come out to pray. The period of Lent, especially as Wednesday, is a public, a public ritual, a public activities. It's a gathering of of a assembly in a, in a public manner. We should gather together to pray together as a church, as a community, as Christians. We should gather always together to pray. This is what Lent is all about. We should fast. Yes, of course. Today is a day of abstinence and fasting. We have to fast. Fast from food. You can regulate your time of fasting, either from 6 to 12, either from 12 to 6, or fast from particular food that you love so much, or drinks that you love to drink, you can abstain from such. Although in the Catholic Church, the canon law prescribes those, those to fast and those not to fast. If you know you are sick and you are on daily basis taking your drugs, you are advised to take little food to take your drugs. If you know you are not up to the ages of 14 or 15 years, as a young man or a young girl, you are to eat food, Parents should cook for their children who are not up to the ages of fasting. If you are above 65 or 70 years, as an old man, you are advised to eat little food. If you are a nursing mother or expectant mother, you are to eat food. But let us do all this in moderation. But we must fast. But the greatest of all the fasting that the church requires of us is to fast from sin, to fast from evil, to avoid sin, fast from gossiping, Fast from immorality. Today being the 14th of February, there are many who have planned to engage themselves in sexual immorality, thereby misunderstanding the Valentine's celebration. And so today choose which one you prefer. Do you prefer Ash Wednesday to uh, uh, the celebration of Valentine's Day? Which one do you prefer? But the church has asked us to embrace Ash Wednesday today. Let us speak more of Ash when I say, than for the unrestful love of the flesh. So, my dear friends, this is what this day calls us for. Let us be ready to fast from sin, fast from immoral life, fast from talk talk, fast from criticism, 
fast from gossiping, fast from condemnation of others, fast from quarreling, fast from being jealous, envy, fighting, and all, all sort of things. We are asked to fast from all these to obtain from sin. Be still and be quiet. You should praise God and love God above all. This is what fasting is all about, my dear friends. And we are asked to give alms. When you give, you have to share with the poor among us. The handicap. Look at the Muslims during their time of Ramadan. You see how they, they go out to give alms to the poor. Although Jesus has asked us to avoid unnecessary shoe. Not to be given alms like uh, politicians who would like to, uh, people to see. To take uh, 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 pictures and the videos coverage of what they are doing in order to show to the world. It should be more than that. That is the type of arms giving Jesus is condemning. People must not know that we are doing good. We should do it, but not to publicize that everybody should come and say, oh, come and see, oh, see, I'm giving this person this, oh, it is for me. I'm the one who gives you shoe. I'm the one who gives you clothes. No, that's not what Jesus says. We shouldn't do it as a public shoe. Uh, shoe. Should show Christians. We should do it from our hearts. Anything we do from our heart, God sees. And our God who sees all that is done in secret from our hearts will reward you. That's what Jesus, the mandate Jesus is giving to us. The guideline and the guiding principles. And above all, to cement these three pillars of land, we must act to forgive others. To have mercy. Forgiveness and mercy is a cement that will cement the three pillars of land. We cannot be doing land when we have failed to forgive one another. Keeping harboring malice. This is the rightful time for you to be reconciled with your enemies. This is the time to go and tell that your enemy and those who do not love you to say this is the time, the time for me to humble myself before you. Whatever I have wronged you, please forgive me. Whatever you have done to me, I am forgiving you. And you can do it with the right spirit of humility and obedience. Land is all about humility and obedience. That is why you are signed with ashes to remind you that, hey, man, do not take yourself so high. Upon all your riches, upon all your beauty, upon all your handsomeness, upon all your possessions, upon all that you have, one day, one day, you shall die. One day, one day, the great shall be lowered to the grave. The grave will become part of your household and that's caskets the coffin will be your bed so why are you proud why are you so full of yourselves not to humble yourself as a child of god to discover that you are nothing into this nothingness you shall return this is what the ashes remind us all throughout this period and this day so my dear friends this is what we are called to do for this limited period. Just 40 days. 40 days was given by the Israelites and 40 years they wandered in the desert before they entered the promised land. 40 itself is the number of perfection. is a number of blessing. When you can attain the 40 days of land, you will receive the blessing. Just like Moses, when he climbed Mount, the Mount Sinai at the end and at the top of Mount Sinai, at the end of 40 days, he was handed with the Ten Commandments. What about the prophet Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19, when he was running away from Ahab and Jezebel? It took him a journey of 40 days and 40 nights. And at the end of the 40 days exercise, he was blessed and he was given more power to face the giant of his time. What about the people of Nineveh for 40 days? Of being in penance with ashes and sackcloth at the end of it God forgive them at the end of 40 days God purified that world that was destroyed during the days of Noah 40 days and 40 nights God purified the world 40 days are here 40 days Jesus prepared himself to begin the, his public ministry in the desert for 40 days so we too are given 40 days in preparation to celebrate the great feast of our salvation, Easter. Use the 40 days in a good way, in a holy manner. All that God wants us to do, just 
Just a little effort. Just a little effort for 40 days. A little effort. Let everybody be touched. Perhaps this could be your last Lenten penance on it. This could be my last Lenten penance on it. This could be my last Ash Wednesday on it. Dear friends, do not be afraid. Take it easy. But be passionate about it. All we are saying, you should be touched. Do it from your hearts. Take it seriously. And I can assure you at the end of this exercise, there's no way our great God, a merciful Father, will not bless you. But let me let you know that on this spiritual journey, which I have just echoed here in my uh, beats song of uh, music to remind me and my you, we have chosen the right way, the way to Calvary, the way of the cross. We have to carry the cross. On Good Friday, the cross will be explained more to us. We are going to venerate the cross to choose the hard way, the way of mortification. It's not just the way of joy, 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 and all that. After the cross, then the crown. After Good Friday, Easter Sunday. So make effort. We are asked to make effort. Despite the challenges we are going to face on the way, the evil one called the devil will, will set his battle against us to make many Christians fall by the wayside. Look at it, our churches today. Our churches are full, packed full with Christians to be signed with ashes. Perhaps they have not known the, the meaning of the signing of ashes. They come from left and right, east and west, north and south, coming. Catholics, non-Catholics, Father, sign me with ashes. What is the reason of you coming to be signed with ashes? The signing of ashes is to, to equip you with the strength to face the 40 days journey. There will be many temptations on the way. Jesus himself was tempted for these 40 days by the devil. A number of things will be given to us to fight against our lantern uh, pillars. And that's why Jesus gave us the weapons to battle our three enemies. We have three enemies that will be very, very powerful during this period of Lent. One, the devil himself, the chief. Two, the whole world will fight against us. The world of corruption, the world of money, the world of possessions, the world of wealth, the world of distraction, the world of business, the world of market, the world of activities, the world of idleness, the world of laziness, the world of social activities and engagement, the world of political activities and engagement. It, it, it will be distracting us all throughout. And then the greatest of all the enemies, the flesh. That enemy within is more powerful than the enemy outside. If we can overcome the flesh in us, then we'll be able to check the devil and check the world. To overcome the flesh, Jesus has given us the spiritual weapon of fasting. When we fast, our flesh will be conquered. To overcome and to overcome the worldly affluence and the worldly distraction, Jesus has given us alms giving. When we give out and we do not possess and keep, we shall overcome the world of wealth and the world of possessions. Give out. Charity is encouraged. Alms giving is encouraged. Look out and give. In the church, we will be giving at the stations of the cross. We are asked to give a special offertory, which will be sent to the Pope to take care of the, the, the poor. We will be giving every Sunday. We will have Sunday Lenten collections. These are all the ways to enable us to give out at all times. Apart from giving in the church, we have the poor among us in, the, in our society, in our communities, in our families, in our street corners. They are there suffering. We should reach out to them to overcome the world of want. And to take care of the devil, the Lord Jesus has given us the weapon of prayer. Pray, pray, pray. St. Peter has told us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 downwards, he said we must always pray because the devil, our ass enemy, is roaring loud like a roaring lion, looking for someone to eat. Stand firm in prayer and he shall overcome him. In many areas of our lives, he uses 
battles and weapons to attack Jesus. As we are going to hear in the first Sunday of Lent, the temptation of Jesus, which will become our own temptations. Jesus was tempted both in his flesh. The devil promised to give Jesus the entire world. The devil asked Jesus to worship him and obey him. So the devil presented himself, the war and the flesh, and Jesus overcame through fasting, through prayer, and giving himself to the world. He chose to give himself to the world, now to conquer the world and save us. Dear friends, let us rely on the grace of God. I know it's not going to be easy. We're going to face these challenges and trials and temptations. Let us pray that God will give us the grace to overcome all the challenges around us. That at the end of it, the grace of land will make us to overcome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my dear friends. I wish you a fruitful Lenten season being today as soon as day. May Almighty God bless and keep you as you go on our journey, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Precious.